beginning of the new week, and we just thank you for it's cold outside, but we thank God that He allowed us to have the outer clothing that we need to keep us warm because some people don't have it. And we just ask God to have mercy because it's it's um in the summertime you can drink you can have less on and still feel good, but in the wintertime you need something to cover up them bones. And, because it get cold outside. And, and I just thank God for his mercy and for his kindness. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sad today, but um, <laughs> my sister, um, Phyllis, when she was my best, best we, we didn't call it like being best friend. We, we call it our homie, you know. Uh, she was my sister, but we were so close. Uh, her birthday would have been, she would have been 76 years old. And of course, my, my family started texting early this morning. And I just couldn't get it together. So um, I, I thank God that, you know, um, when you lose someone, you never get over it, but you get through it. And, so I, I thank God for his mercy and for his kindness. I thank him for, for his word because God knew, uh, he knew that she would be gone before. But I just thought we were going to be old ladies together, uh, rocking in our rocking chair. And, you know, uh, we never um, did snuff or nothing like that, but. It's just that I thought she would be here, but she is not, so uh, God knows best, so we must go on. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for all you do and all that you're going to do, God. You make no mistakes, God. Sometimes we, we go through our trials and tribulations, God, and we want to we want to get to the end before we start the beginning, God, but you said there's something that we have to learn while we're going through, God, so we put our trust in you and that you would lead God and direct our path, God, because we all, we all fall short, God, because you said we're, we're not perfect beings, we're, we're, we're walking to, to get to that promised land so that when this life is over, that we can rest in you, God. And I thank you and I praise you in Jesus' name. Today's lesson, it, it comes from the Old Testament. Um, it comes from 2 Samuel, the 7th chapter, verses 4 through 17. But 4 through 17 starts the lesson, but uh, the verses... One through uh, three, it tells you uh, what what really is going on in this chapter, and and why. Uh, verse four, it, it began with the Lord. It said, "The Lord prophetic word to David," and the main thought is, "Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me." Your throne shall establish forever, shall be established forever. And the fourth verse, it said, But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. And you know how sometimes you get together with your friends and you tell them all that, that uh, you want to do. And that's what David desired to build the Lord's house. And verse 1 through three it say, and it came to pass when the king, that's King David, sat in his house, and the Lord had given him rest. So, you know, God gave him rest from his enemies, and he was able to sit back in his his uh, recliner and probably put his head behind his drink of Pepsi or Coke, and you know, and just rest, because he had went through a, a, a lot of because uh, he was a warrior, he had to fight uh, round about from all his enemies. 
that the king said unto, and this is what David said unto Nathan, the prophet. See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwelleth within curtains. It's like he was feeling sorry for God, that God, I got all this luxury in, and God dwell in this tent and and uh, uh, but God is a spirit, and, and we can we can't lock God in. Mm -hmm. And so, and then the third verse, and Nathan said to the king, Nathan was agreeing with him, you know, okay, okay, King David. He said, Go on, boy, do all that is in thy heart, for the Lord is with thee. And you know, uh, Nathan was Nathan was a prophet, and he was encouraging. Uh, David, go ahead and do it. Uh, it's in your heart. You go ahead and do it. But uh, God is, is 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 listening all the time, and God hears their discussion because God is omnipresent. He is everywhere. Mm -hmm. And so, verse four, it, it came, and it said, it came to pass that night that the word of the Lord came unto Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? So uh, God was questioning David. Are you, are you really the one, David? You have a lot of blood on your hands, and you have, you've been a war, you've been out there fighting, but, and, and, and you want to, Take it upon you to, to build my house. Are you feeling sorry for me? Don't feel sorry for me. Because I'm a spirit and I can't be I can't be boxed in. I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Egypt, Israel from Egypt to this day. He said, I, I haven't lived in a house, so you can't. I understand you want to do something special for me, but you can't house me in. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel whom I command to shepherd my people of Israel, saying, why have you not built me a house, a house of cedar? So, so God was letting Nathan know that uh, I'm giving you a word, and I want you to take this word to to David. I I understand that he might feel a little uh, pity in his heart for me because I have I'm living in a, a house of cedar, and he's just in a tent. But God said, I'm okay with that because I move around and, and, and my spirit can't be boxed. I can't be boxed in. So I don't need you to, to uh, build me a house so, uh, uh, because I am free and I, I want to continue to free. But I want a house built, but it's not in your hands. It's going to come out of your, out of your seed, but it's not going to be you there. And so, uh, that was the Lord's preferred word to David. That was to David. And then uh, the second part is the Lord promises to David. And you know, uh, a lot of times we want to do we want to do so so much for God that all that God wants us to do is 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 to to praise Him, to to lift up holy hands to say. Hallelujah, when the word comes forth to, to uh, honor him and serve him. Because he, he said, he, Jesus said, he didn't come down here to, to be served, but he came to, to be a servant. And we are a servant of the most high God. And that's what, that's what God wants us to it, 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 He was saying, David, it's, it's good that you want to, to be a your house, but I, I prefer that you, you continue to lift up my name. I could prefer that you continue to, to praise me. I can I prefer that you continue to serve my people, serve the poor and the needy. 
you know, to make sure that the word goes out to, to each generation. And I want to read some of the uh, commentary. It is, it's very, it, it, it's, it's uh, helps out with what you study. It is not every day that we are blessed to truly reflect with such a, a degree of humility and love for God that we desire to do more or greater things for him. The word of Jehovah came unto Nathan, who lived during the time of King David. It is believed that he was a court prophet who is introduced in 2 Samuel, the 7th chapter, and the 2nd verse in 1 Chronicles 17, verse 1. He is, the best, he is best known as a prophet God used to help David uh, acknowledge his sin. Remember David uh, saw the Sheba on the uh, balcony and his eyes just, it just, it went, it went there to a place of lust. And, and that's what the, the flesh will do. You know, we, we all go through that. We, because the words that we've all seen that come short of God's glory. So we, we just got to be careful uh, when we, uh, we can glance, but if we stare too hard, then that flesh is, is going to, to, to take over and, and do what it's got to do. But, uh, and then Nathan, uh, God sent Nathan to, to tell David about his sins. Here Nathan is told to ask David, are you the one to build me a house to live in? The language is not meant to be negative as much as it is to have David think about his desire. So that was David's desire. God did not ask him to, to do it, but that was his desire. And sometimes we have a desire to do things, but sometimes it's not of God. And we got to say, we got to make sure God is is not my will, but it's your will. Even our uh, Jesus, when he died on the cross, he said, Father, not my will, God, but your will be done. Because he said, do I have to drink this bitter cup? Mm -hmm. But then he he honored God. And, and that's how we, I have to honor God. God, I, I don't want to do it uh, this way, God, but I have to do it your way to honor you so. Not my will, God, but your will be done. Mm -hmm. God reveals that in all the years of dwelling with Israel, from the time he delivered them out of Egypt, God had not had a permanent place of residence. Mm -hmm. he, he didn't want to be boxed in. You know, uh, I live at 318 Denmark. God said, don't put my name as a permanent place. Uh, place because I'm going to go here, I'm going to go there because I'm a spirit and I don't want to be dwelled in. I don't want I, I, I want to be in a place but it's not right now David. It's not and, and God has not had a permanent place of residence as they move from place to place. God moved with them, them in the presence of the ark of the covenant. David's motivation came because he brought the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem and placed it on Mount Zion. David also realized how the Lord had blessed him with a great wealth and victory over his enemies. God's point, verse 7, is that his major concern is not building a permanent home. His major concern is that his people will worship and serve him and cease from worshiping idols. They should be so grateful for being chosen as his people and gladly tell the world about God, merciful, steadfast, unfailing love. So God is not, he said, don't, don't box me in. I just want you to praise me. I want you to be free in me. I want you to praise me. I want you to, to worship me in spirit and in truth. I want you, because we are filled with the Holy Ghost when we accept Jesus Christ. And we can't, we can't box God in when God, 
miracle happened on this Sunday, we can't expect the same thing to happen. Mm -hmm. We got to look for even greater things than God. And that's how God is. He, he does great things for us every day. And verse 8, it said, Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David. So God is sending Nathan, the prophet, a messenger, uh, a spokesman for him to, to tell David, it, it's not your time. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's going to be in your family, but it's going to be uh, uh, your son Solomon. He says, it's not, it, it's, it's not your time, David. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture. He said, David, uh, you was in the pasture tending sheep. From following the sheep to be prince over my people, Israel. So he took them for the, from the, from the uh, field to the, to the uh, palace. And only God can do that. But he said, it, it's okay that, that you have that desire, David, but not right now. And I have been with you wherever you went and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name like the name of the great ones of the earth. He said, I will, I will make your name great. He said, because the word said, David was a man after God's own heart. And David did a, a, a lot of things that we would turn up our nose or say, how can God? But uh, God looks at our heart. He don't look at, uh, at, at this, this, the things that we do, in, but God looks at the heart because God knows deep down inside that we are good, we are good people, but sometimes we, we mess up. Sometimes we go, we going on the, on that straight and narrow, but we go on that wide road, but God pulls us back. And that's what happened to David. Uh, but I, I thank God that he's showing us that, that sometimes we're going to mess up. We're going to have a desire for God, but God said, it's not for you right now. And God don't want us to get mad. He wants us to get glad. He wants us to, to keep, continue to praise him. In verse 10 it said, and I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be, be disturbed no more. Just look at God. Just, just, just look at the, the, the awesomeness, the, the love that God has for his, his people. And evildoers shall afflict them no more as for me. He said, I know you, you, they, they've been going through, they've been picked on, they've been uh, uh, they had to take the straw and build houses and, and the enemy just fought them every day but God said I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more hallelujah and verse 11 says from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel and I will give you rest mm -hmm. from all your enemies. That, he keeps talking about the enemies but he keeps saying I will, I will go protect you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you the desires of your heart. Mm -hmm. Moreover the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. How about that? God said he will make you a house. You don't have to make me a house. I'll make you a house. I will, I will protect you from all your enemies. <clears throat> he said, but don't, why are you going through? I know you might be a little disappointed because I, I said, I, I don't want you to build me a house, but, but if, if you can look in the future, you'll see that that house is going to be built. And your name will be associated with that house. So, verse 12, it says, The Lord's 
promised Messiah. Verse 12, when your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors, he said, David, when your life is over and you lie down with your ancestors, he said, I will raise up your offspring after you who shall come forth from your body and I will establish his kingdom. Mm -hmm. So God said, I, I've already prepared uh, someone to build the house. It's just not going to be mm -hmm. your hands, mm -hmm. but it's going it's to be your offspring. So it will still be in the family. Mm -hmm. We are family, so we're going to keep it in the family. Mm -hmm. But he said, when you're dead and gone, your offspring is going to Build a house. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne in his kingdom forever. He said, He will, Solomon will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne in, of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. We're in this together. We are working it out because of you, David. Because, because you was a leader. And that your son is going to be a leader. I will be a father to him. And he shall be a son to me. When he commits iniquity, I will punish him with a rod such as mortals use. He said, he said, I will when he do, he do, do something wrong, I will punish him like your, your natural father would have done. I will correct him with blows inflicted by human beings. You know, because sometimes when, when we did something wrong, uh, and our parents, they, they got those switches, and they would, especially a girl, they would go to them legs, and, and uh, most of the time, we had on dresses or, or capri pants and mom would go to them legs and I'm sure burn them legs up. So God said, I'm going to afflict you when you do iniquity. When you do wrong, uh, I'm going to do as the mortals do. You will be punished. But then look what verse 15 says. But I will not take my steadfast love from him. He said, even though uh, I'm, I'm, I'm punishing you because of the iniquity when you do wrong, he said, but I, I'm not taking my love from you. I still love you. And that's what Mama said would, would tell us. It hurts me more than it hurts you. I said, Mama, it can't. It can't. But she was telling me, I, I love you, but when you do something wrong, I will punish you. I will take care because I don't want you to go out here in the world and you be locked up because she said we ever go to jail we're gonna stay there. Mm -hmm. I hope she mama didn't mean that, but those are those were some strong words that she would tell us. As I took it from Saul, whom I put away from being you. You know, Saul uh, Saul was angry with David. Because Jonathan, his son, and David, they were best friends. And uh, Jonathan did a lot of things to, to keep uh, his father from killing David, even though uh, 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 Saul was in a, a, a cave and David could have killed him, but he didn't. And so that was, it was a lot of malice. Uh, uh, with, with Saul because he, it was just jealousy it was uh, uh, because Saul bragged on what he did but uh, David sometimes did more and Saul became jealous and uh, and that's why they mentioned Saul your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me your throne shall be established forever so David, God is telling David, all oh, this is going to happen. Not in your time, it's going to be happening. 
once you lie with your ancestors, once you're dead and gone. Mm -hmm. In verse 17, it said, in accordance with all these words and with all this vision, mm -hmm. Nathan spoke to David. So, so David, um, even though him and the prophet, Nathan was having these conversations, uh, God sent the, uh, Nathan out to let David know that it wasn't his time, that it would be in his son's time. And if you read the last portion of, I know the lesson ends at verse 17. But I just want to read uh, verses 23, 20, 21 through 25. It's for the word's sake. For the word's sake and according to thy own heart has thou done all these great things to make thy servant known, know thee. Wherefore thou art great, O Lord God, for there is none like thee, neither is there any God besides thee, according to all that we have heard with our ears. And what one nation in this earth is like thy people, even like Israel, whom God went to redeem for a people to himself, and to make a name, him a name, and to do for you great things and terrible. For the land before thy people, which thou redeemest to them, thee from Egypt, from the nations, and from their God. Mm -hmm. For thou hast confirmed to thyself thy people Israel to be a people unto thee forever, and thou, Lord, are become thy God. And now, O Lord, the word that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant. And concerning this house, establish it forever, and do as thou hast said. And let thy name be magnified forever, saying, The Lord of hosts is the God over Israel. And let the house of thy servant David be established before thee. For thou, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, has revealed to thy servant, saying, I will build thee a house. Mm -hmm. Therefore has thy servant found in thy heart to pray this prayer unto thee. And now, O Lord God, thou art thy God, and thy words be true. And thou hast promised these goodness for thy servant. Therefore, now let it please thee to bless the house of thy servant, that it may continue forever before thee. Mm -hmm. For thou, O Lord God, hast spoken it, and with thy blessings let the house of thy servant be blessed forever. Mm -hmm. So when you get a chance, read it, uh, and maybe you've already done it, the end of, of chapter 7, and that's David's prayer, David's worship and prayer, starting with verse 18 to 29. And even though God told David that he didn't want him to build it, David, God didn't want David to go up there and and suck and pout and be disturbed with God wanted David to uh, continue to praise him, to continue to lift up his name. And sometimes we go through things and um, we think we're supposed to do it, but God said, it's not, that's not what I want you to do. I want you to do this. And so we just, we just got to keep on loving God and and do things that's pleasing in his sight, his sight, because he, he knows all about us. He is, he is uh, everywhere. He's all knowing. He is, he is everywhere. And, you know, he has all power. So we just, we just got to do the things that, that God wants us to do, because it's, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. And I will, um, this is the end of our lesson for today. Um, our next week lesson it says let get ready and that comes from Luke the first chapter verse 67 through 80 and the key verse is and you child will be called the prophet of the most high 
for you will be you will go before the Lord to prepare his way and to give his people knowledge and salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. Mm. So that's Luke, the first chapter, verses 67 through 80. That concludes our lesson for today. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your just uh, opening up your word and just studying your word and, and knowing more and more about your power, Lord. Just, just honoring you, Father, for giving us and the strength to go through our outer struggle, God. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, because the joy of the Lord is our strength, God. We don't put our trust in mankind, but we put our trust in you, God. We realize that things are going to change in January, but you don't change, God. So we, we got to still look to the hills from which cometh our help. And know that all our help comes from you. Yes, Lord. And we thank you, God. We thank, thank you, you in the name of Jesus, oh God. And whatever we do, God, let us do it in the name of Jesus. Let us be pleasing in your sight, God. We give you glory, we give you honor, yes. and we give you praise, God. We want to shout about it, God. We want to praise your name, God. Because you are worthy to be praised, God. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, God, in the name of Jesus. And we welcome you to our church service this morning at 1030, where our own Reverend Dr. Winfrey Gallagher will be preaching the word. Amen. And we just invite you to come and shout, sing, Amen. clap your hand, Amen. praise the Lord. Just get on board and let's work for the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Because we are expecting a miracle.